Hi there viewers and welcome to the Repair It Don't Wreck It channel. The channel that shows you how to save money by repairing your own equipment. One of the easiest ways to keep your equipment running is to perform scheduled maintenance. Today I will be walking you through checking the propane gas pressure supply to your generator. This video is part of my series on Generac whole home generators. Let's get started. Remove the 1 8 inch plug on the fuel regulator to provide a point to attach your manometer to. You will need a 5 16 inch barb by 1 8 inch male iron pipe adapter to attach the manometer. Put a bit of pipe sealant, or as we say in the trade, pipe dope on the adapter thread and screw it in by hand. Once the manometer is connected, you can turn on the fuel valve. You can see when the gas pressure is turned on, the pressure goes up to 10 inches water column, bounces around, and then drops back to eight inches. This is not normal. I want to check the pressure at another location to try and isolate where the problem is. Turn off the fuel supply and disconnect the generator flex connector. Attach a half inch male iron pipe by 1 8 inch black bushing onto the gas line where we disconnected the flex hose that supplies the generator. Attach the same adapter that was used for testing at the fuel regulator. Let's see what we get. It's the same static pressure as the first test. Pressure rises to 10 inches water column. So the pressure between the supply on the black iron pipe and the regulator in the generator is the same at both ends. The problem has to be somewhere else. Let's put the 1 8 inch plug back into the regulator. All you need is a little bit of pipe dope on the plug. Use your hex bit to get the plug started by hand. Then you can finish off with the ratchet. This is a small fitting, so don't over tighten it. I'm going to install a half inch T and put the adapter back in for the manometer on the branch. Be careful when putting pipe dope on the flexible hose adapter. You don't want to get any sealant on the inside of the fitting. You can see the hose to the generator is slightly bowed, but this is only a temporary connection for testing. Finally, Install the adapter on the branch and connect the manometer. Now that the manometer is connected, turn on the fuel valve. The pressure rises to 12 and a half to 13 inches water column static. When we turn on the generator, it drops to almost five inches water column. There's definitely something wrong. I believe it's the primary regulator at the propane tanks. I'm going to have the owner contact the propane company and have them check out their equipment. We're back. Here's a shot of the primary regulator the propane company has replaced. The static pressure now is sitting at 16 inches water column. And when the generator was started, it dropped down to say 15 inches or so. I believe the problem has been solved. Generac recommends between 10 and 12 inches water column for propane. We're looking around 15 to 16 inches water column. Let's run it for a while and see how it goes. In the meantime, let's put the half inch black cap on. While I was soap testing, I thought I would loosen the cap to create a leak so you could see how the bubbles reacted. Don't panic if the cap falls off. The shutoff valve is right beside it. The half inch threaded nipple is almost completely out before the bubbles start to appear. You can see there's no doubt there's a leak. Before tightening it in, I did redope it. I look like an amateur with this pipe wrench. It's brand new and the teeth on the jaws are sharp and it keeps sticking on me. Once it's tightened in the cap, re-soap everything and double check for leaks. After running the unit for a period of time without any trouble, 
I've decided to remove the test fittings and put everything back to the original setup. Dope up the adapter that connects the black iron pipe elbow to the flexible generator connector. Normally I would use pipe dope that you would put on with a brush. This was some sealant that I had left over that I wanted to use up before it dried out. When doping up these fittings, make sure there isn't any debris inside. As always, do not over tighten these fittings. It has been my observation that people that don't do this very much will always over tight the fittings and try and put them into tomorrow. There's a little bit of rust on that flex hose threads so a bit of lubricant can't hurt. Once you get the thread started by hand, then you can finish off with a pair of pliers. When tightening, don't forget to hold back on the flex connector so you don't damage it. When I started this video, I thought it was going to be a simple demonstration of how to check the gas pressure. I wasn't expecting to have any trouble. However, it's worked out on our favor because it has made for an interesting video and shown you a few things. Turn on the gas valve. Put the controller in the off position and reinstall the 7.5 amp fuse into the controller. Since that fuse was removed, an alarm was created. We have to reset the alarm. So you push escape, enter, and now we can start the generator with the manual button. Listen to it, make sure everything sounds fine. And when you're happy, put the generator into the auto position ready for the next emergency. The two holes that are at the bottom of the chassis will accept the two pins that are on the bottom of the door. The two pins that are on top of the chassis will go into the elongated slots at the top of the door, right there. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please reach out to me in the comments section. And as always, repair it. Don't wreck it. Thanks for watching.